Здравейте, уважаеми зрители, вие сте с Поглед ТВ. Днес имам честа да съм събеседник на господин Пол Крек Робъртс, бивш заместник министър на финансите на Съединените щати при президента Роналд Рейган, американски общественик, публичен деятел и геополитически анализатор. Greetings, Mr. Roberts. Thank you for accepting our invitation for this interview. It's an honor for our entire team. Yes. Uh, Mr. Roberts, in Bulgaria and in Europe as a general, uh, the American elections and what happened also on the 6th of January in Washington, D.C., are presented, uh, the elections and the victory of Joe Biden presented as a sort of triumph of democracy over madness, while the events of the 6th of January are presented as an extremist uprising of that's uh, encouraged by a madman and even a fascist. But what actually happened on the elections and on the 6th of January? <laughs> All right. Um, no one much knows what happened <clears throat> because the evidence of electoral theft was never presented to the people. Uh, the media never examined it and it was kept out of the courts by the refusal of the courts to accept the cases. The one time that the evidence was being presented was on January the 6th at the Congress, and that was uh, prevented by the so-called assault on the Capitol. The riot consisted of the Capitol Police opening the doors and letting the so-called rioters into the Capitol. Uh, they walked around, did no damage, uh, took uh, selfies with their cell phones of themselves, uh, sitting in various uh, congresspersons' chairs, and peacefully left. All this happened while President Trump was still speaking to his supporters at the Washington Monument about one mile away. <laughs> so the notion uh, that the Capitol was assaulted was used to stop uh, the presentation of the evidence, the only presentation, uh, before it could be given and the members were so intimidated by the propaganda that they dismissed the rest of the presentation. So no one ever heard it, with the exception of some members of the state legislatures in what are called swing states. I myself watched the presentation uh, in three of these states, um, uh, Arizona, Michigan, and Georgia. And the evidence presented by uh, professional firms, experts in pattern analysis and electoral analysis is very powerful, it was very convincing. Uh, that the election was stolen. There were also hundreds, perhaps as many as 1,000 affidavits signed by witnesses uh, of fraud under a penalty of perjury. In other words, if you sign uh, an affidavit, you are, uh, you are swearing that it's true, and therefore, if you are lying, you are guilty of the felony of perjury. So people don't uh, sign these things uh, carelessly. Well, what was the evidence of the stolen election? Well, the professional uh, uh, firms run by experts, mathematicians, um, uh, presented three kinds of fraud embedded in the voting machines by the software. Uh, one presentation showed that the machines could be programmed 
to weigh the counting of the votes. In one case, the experts said that votes for Biden were counted 1.3. Votes for Trump were counted 0.7. <laughs> so uh, this was a way of enlarging Biden's vote and decreasing Trump's vote. Uh, another way, experts said, the machines were used, was that they would produce a large number of disputed counts. In other words, the votes would then have, the ballots would then have to be adjudicated by election officials who could rule them any way they wanted. And so in uh, uh, counties that had uh, large numbers of, of Biden voters, uh, there would be a large number of disputed votes. And when they were adjudicated, the votes would be allocated to Biden. Another way was the machines would have the ability to add votes to to Biden's account, so that uh, if the uh, count was running against Biden, the machine would just add more Biden votes. <laughs> so these presentations were presented. Uh, they were done by professional firms. Uh, now, in addition, there were the mail-in ballots. American elections uh, don't, don't use mail-in ballots, except for people like who are in armed services who are not able to vote. They are restricted in their use. But because of the COVID virus, the Democrats set it up that anybody could vote by mail and sent out a large number of mail-in ballots. Now, there was all kinds of fraud associated with these ballots. Uh, people who were dead voted. People voted in one state who lived in another state. Illegal aliens voted. In addition, there were large stacks of ballots available to be voted by the election officials if they needed them. <laughs> the, these were obviously ballots that had never been mailed because they had never been folded and put into envelopes. But they were available so that if the vote count was unfavorable to Biden, these ballots could be filled out uh, and voted for Biden. There are videos showing um, Democratic election officials voting the same ballots over and over. They run them through the machine. They come out. They stack them. They put them back in the machine. They run them again. They put them back in. These are available videos. There are other videos, for example, uh, in, in Georgia, because the buildings they were using had security cameras. <laughs> and it shows that, OK, the election officials, the Democratic election officials announced um, voting is over. Everybody go home. Then they pulled out from under the tables all these boxes of ballots and started running them through the machines. Now, all of this is documented. If you weren't a member of the legislature of the few states that called for the evidence to be shown them, you didn't know this. Or if you didn't watch it, you could watch it live on the internet while it happened. But few people have hours to send to spend in front of the screen watching evidence. The newspaper said from day one, before any time, had been available for anyone to look at the evidence. There's no evidence. There's no evidence. 
It's a, it's a fraudulent claim. There's no evidence. There's no evidence. The cases that were taken to court, the court simply would not accept the case because if they accepted the case, they had to look at the evidence. <laughs> so they would rule, for example, that the person bringing the case had no standing to bring the case. In other words, that person wasn't affected by the case, and so he had no standing to bring it. Uh, the uh, Supreme Court even ruled against the Attorney General of Texas, who brought the case. Well, they didn't rule against him. They just said, we won't take the case. You don't have standing. So the evidence was never shown to people. So this is they never saw any evidence. This made it easy for the media to insist there is no evidence. So uh, that's the story. Yes, the election uh, was stolen. Um, half the population, or roughly half, <clears throat> believe that it was stolen. Uh, the Democrats know it was stolen because they stole it. <laughs> but you're not permitted to say it. If you say it, that means you're an enemy of democracy. It means you are a Putin agent. You are, dis you are helping President Putin of Russia um, discredit American democracy by saying that it was stolen. So they've put the clamps on the ability to say it. Uh, people who say it on social media such as Twitter, or they post the videos showing the theft on Facebook, uh, they are deplatformed. That means they are shut down and uh, they're kicked off or they're not permitted to be there. Their postings are taken down. So not even individuals uh, can uh, post <laughs> the information. There was one social media site called Parler. It allowed people to say this and to post videos showing election theft. It was closed down by American big tech. Uh, they denied it service. They denied its ability to function and they closed the site down. It remained uh, closed for a week or two and eventually found a server um, somewhere else, uh, outside the country, I believe, to host the parlor site. I don't know if they've moderated, <laughs> if they now impose censorship themselves or not. I don't spend much time looking at social media. So that's, uh, that's that story. The election was uh, stolen. I forget the other part of your question, but that's the answer to that. <laughs> uh, well, it was about uh, the 6th of January. Uh, since you mentioned uh, that oh, yes. evidence was being presented, but nobody looked at it, uh, thanks to the so-called uprising. So what actually happened on the 6th of January? And is it possible that uh, someone may have uh, made a false flag operation on the 6th of January. Yes. Um, first of all, there was no storming of the Capitol. The Capitol was not stormed and broken into and, and done damage to. Um, during the period in which the Capitol was allegedly stormed, Trump was still speaking at the Washington Monument, which I think is about one mile away. So you would expect his supporters would be there listening to his speech, not at the Capitol. <laughs> now, it's very easy to put on a red Trump hat. It doesn't mean that you're a Trump supporter. And it's very easy uh, to have people uh, making a protest at the Capitol. Um, but there doesn't seem to have been really any organized violence. Um, the confrontations with the police seem to be limited. Um, 
And the only real violence occurred when a black policeman inside the Capitol shot a woman uh, who was a, a former member of the American Armed Forces, a veteran. She wasn't threatening the policeman. No one knows why he shot her. But it provided violence. So they could talk about a violence, a violent storming of the Capitol. The policeman was uh, taken into custody and allegedly investigated, but we've not heard anything else about it. So that was the source of the violence. A black policeman shot a white woman. We don't know why. Uh, she was not a threat to him. <laughs> and there was no damage done uh, to the Capitol. And, and the people who entered, the videos show them entering calmly in single file, uh, staying within the rope guidelines that they use for tourists. You know, tourists are allowed to go through and it shows them leaving peacefully. So uh, th there were some hijinks in the Capitol. Uh, some people sat in chairs of officials and took selfies of themselves. Uh, but to call it a violent storming of the Capitol is an invention. It's a total invention. <laughs> no, no such thing happened. But they keep repeating it, they keep repeating it, they keep repeating it. It's now simply an established fact. <laughs> so, uh, and I, as I say, as I said, its purpose appears to have been to stop the presentation of the evidence of a stolen election to the Congress. And it succeeded. So that was really the purpose of the alleged uh, riot. <laughs> uh, Mr. Roberts, uh, it appears that at least a part of the Republican Party has uh, abandoned President Trump, and it would seem like they are kind of aligned with the Democrats. Is there a thing like a bipartisan consensus in the U.S.? Uh, yes, you have to understand that the members of both parties, with very few exceptions, are members of the establishment. People in the world need to understand that to be elected to office, to the Congress, to the House, to the, to the Senate, or to be elected as president, this is generally controlled by those who make the campaign contributions, that is, those who provide the money to support the propaganda of the candidate's campaign. It's very expensive to get elected in America. And so the candidate who went, all candidates are supported by the interest groups. Usually the interest groups support both sides so it doesn't matter to them who wins <laughs> because the winning candidate is indebted to the people who provided the campaign funds in order to get elected. So members of the House, the Senate, and the presidency, generally speaking, represent the powerful organized interest that control the country, and therefore they serve those interests. There were a few Republicans who took exception to that and tried to represent the people, as did Donald Trump. And those Republicans are now experiencing uh, all sorts of uh, difficulties. They're being called names, they're ostracized. Uh, the, their efforts to have them evicted from the Congress and, and so on. Now, what was unusual about Trump was that he was a non-establishment candidate who did not need establishment money 
because he was a multi-billionaire and could finance his own campaign. And it surprised the establishment that he was able to get the nomination. They did not expect that he would get the nomination because they had the media against him. But more than half of Americans have no confidence in the media any longer. <laughs> so it wasn't effective. And so it surprised the establishment when Trump got the Republican nomination. However, they were confident he could not win the election over Hillary. And they were surprised when he won the election. So they immediately went to work to get rid of him. That's what Russiagate was about. It was a three-year effort uh, to discredit Trump as being in league with Putin, being an agent of Russia. When that failed, uh, they then invented uh, Impeachgate. They were trying to impeach Trump for allegedly bribing uh, the president of Ukraine, uh, which is what Biden did, not Trump. Uh, and so for four years, they uh, stayed after him, trying to discredit him. This involved the Department of Justice, the FBI, the CIA, not just the media and the Democrats. It could not have been done without the Department of Justice itself, even Trump's own Justice Department <laughs> worked against him. So uh, when it became apparent that he would win re-election because of his popular support, uh, they began setting uh, a stage for stealing the election. They realized that it were only about six states that they had to swing to their account. They didn't have to try to swing the, the blue states that would vote for Democrat and the red states that would vote for Republican. And that they wouldn't be able to steal enough votes in those states to change it. But in the swing states where sometimes they vote Republican for president, sometimes they vote Democrat for president, where there are often close votes, those are the states they focused on. And that's where the election theft took place, in the so-called swing states. Pennsylvania, um, uh, Michigan, Arizona, Nevada, those, that's in Minnesota, that's where they stole the election. So what we have now is the triumph of the establishment over the people. Now, those who voted Democrat, most of them, they may not realize that yet. They just think, oh, we got rid of this awful orange-haired Trump. And they may not realize that what they have done is to put the establishment now firmly in charge. The entire government, the House, the Senate, the White House, is now in the hands of a relatively few powerful interest groups. Mr. Roberts, uh but on the other hand, uh, you yourself said that half of the American nation doesn't believe uh, the media narrative. Uh, so, considering the fact uh, that the American nation is the most armed nation in the world, is there a danger of a civil conflict in America? Well, uh, possibly, but you see the establishment is already moving to prevent that. Um, what they're doing uh, is criminalizing the First Amendment. You're not to be allowed free speech or free association. The Democrats are bringing forward a domestic anti-terrorism bill. In other words, 
The first anti-terrorism bill was against the Muslims in the Middle East. <laughs> now there's one against Americans. And who is a domestic terrorist? Everyone who challenges official explanations. If you go against official explanation, oh, you're, you are a domestic terrorist. That's how it will be used. They're not advertising it that way, but that's the way it, it, it's used. What they're saying is, oh, we have all these armed people. They're all white supremacists. Uh, they're all uh, systemic racists. Uh, uh, we have to uh, legislate against them. And so if you take issue with an establishment explanation, you're a domestic terrorist. They've also now issued a gun control bill where you have to register your firearms with the federal government. Well, historically, once you register, you're then confiscated. <laughs> so they're taking steps uh, to criminalize everyone who voted for Trump and to disarm the population that has guns, except, of course, it, it won't affect the criminal gangs because they won't, uh, they won't pay any attention. They're certainly not going to give up their weapons. So I think that makes it uh, very difficult. You see, what people don't really understand is that the Biden regime is going to be America's first totalitarian government. It's all set up for that. The media have already demonized the white Gentile Trump supporters. They are systemic racists, enemies of democracy, uh, uh, make America great again terrorists. They're completely demonized in the media. Uh, by, if you look at Biden's appointments, they are largely people who are hostile to white Gentiles. So what it means is that white conservative Americans are going to lose the equal protection of law. It may happen rapidly, it may happen slowly, but it's already happened. And it's the function of the appointees that Biden has put, particularly in the Justice Department, such that law is going to apply differently to different groups. Well, you can see where it goes <laughs> from there. And so I think that we can say that the Biden regime is America's first totalitarian government. But is there some hope that, for example, in 2022, uh, the control of the Democrats over both houses can be overturned and something can stop uh, this totalitarianism? Well, how? Now that they know they can steal elections and that no one will protest, no one protested. There were, the bar associations didn't protest. The universities didn't. Uh, the courts wouldn't even take the cases. The Congress never saw the evidence. Um, the media is controlled by the establishment. The Democrats now are the establishment's party. So if they can steal the, the election from Trump, they can steal any election. You know, what's not reported, but this is a fact, just counting the official votes that Trump is said to have received, officially, 
I'm not talking about the real vote that was stolen, but the official vote that Trump received over 74 million was 10 million more than he received when he won the election in 2016. So he gets 10 million more votes than he won four years ago. Three times the black vote and he loses. No one went to Biden's campaign events. They stopped having them. It was so embarrassing. No one came. Trump's campaign events, regardless of the weather, were overwhelmingly attended. <laughs> Trump got more votes than Obama got in his elections. Who can possibly believe that Biden, who generated no enthusiasm from anybody, got 10 million more votes than Trump. The most of any president in history. How does a nondescript, senile candidate who half the time doesn't know where he is get 10 million more votes than Trump, who's got 10 million more votes than he won four years ago. It's not conceivable. And yet they got away with it. So they can steal any election. Particularly if you are an enemy of democracy, if you challenge it. So who's going to challenge it? You know, people who attended the Trump rally were fired from their jobs for attending the rally. <laughs> Clearly, you have no freedom of association. Uh, people who worked in the Trump administration are having difficulty finding employment. Normally, someone who comes out of uh, the administration is snapped up by firms who want the connections, who want the lobbying ability. Uh, they're having trouble. Uh, a lot of Trump people, knowing that would be the case, resigned in December to try to put distance. So people are being penalized for having worked in the Trump administration. So they can steal all the elections they want. It's just who's going to complain if you complain? You're a domestic terrorist. You're, you're discrediting democracy. You're Putin's agent. You see, already, uh, Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi, who is Speaker of the House, they had a podcast together. You know, a podcast is like a, a, uh, a show on the Internet. And they raised the question. They said, well... Uh, Putin ordered Trump to call for the assault on the Capitol. In other words, Trump calls the riot because Putin told him to. Now, if Hillary Clinton, a uh, former presidential candidate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives can say such blatant transparent nonsense and there's no consequences <laughs> why why expect uh, anything to happen to stop the totalitarianism in America you can say any outrageous thing as long as it's against traditional Americans Uh, thank you for your words, and we will continue in the second part.